Hi everyone, welcome to the Worship and Union Center United Methodist Church, where we love God and praise God through loving each other for the transformation of the world. As a pastor, it is my honor and happy to be with you on a beautiful Sunday morning under the vision of Jesus Christ. So once more, I would like to say thank you everyone, especially visitors and new visitors haven't seen for a while to your home church. Thank you. And it's welcome. We are thankful, grateful, and joyful that you are here to be with us today. So let us prepare our heart and mind and go to the invitation to worship together. Please stand if you are able as we say this. God is God who calls. God is God who equips. God is God who sends us. God is God who blesses. Let us worship God. Would you pray with me? Our Father who is in heaven, descend anew to our earth. Yes into this place of worship too. Empower us with a faith that lives, a grace that heals, and love that shares. Keep us alive to the beauty of your world and to the joys in the, our worship service and the world of human relationships through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Let us continue to praise our living God with our opening hymn together.
awesome. Dave, I saw you clapping. I was there with you right here in my heart. That was awesome. Yeah, praise the Lord. Please remain standing so that we can say the Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. Amen. And our gospel reading today is from Matthew 10, 40 through 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cold cup of water to one of those little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Amen. And now we have special music that Mia's going to bless us with.
you. That was amazing. And I introduced that as special music by Mia, but that was actually special music by Mia, Hawan, and Grace. Now is the time in our service where we talk about our joys and concerns and our prayer requests. But before we get to such fun stuff, I see a box in the back. Cassidy, come up here, and if I could just introduce, um, you want to stay there and talk? Do you have the uh, microphone, Andrew? makes the appearance, you know something special is happening today. So we um, are sponsoring, hosting the church picnic today right after the service. Um, all proceeds or love offering donations will go towards Operation Christmas Child. Um, we've been shopping right along since the end of last year. We have a good stockpile, but we would like to fill 125 boxes this year. Um, so we're looking forward to more donations so we can touch more lives of children across the world. So please come join us. If you're unable to and you still feel led to make a donation, um, the shoebox will be holding a shoebox back here. Um, and we'll humbly take donations so we can continue this, this worldwide outreach, um, especially at a time that so many children around the world are, are hurting and in need. Um, so it's just very special to be able to be part of this uh, global ministry. So thank you for your participation in that. And thank you for your prayers um, over the past year, but especially the past um, few months for my Aunt Dodie. She went to be with the Lord Thursday morning um, in the presence of her three children, a grandchild, and a special friend. Um, a very peaceful passing after a very difficult and, and painful cancer um, that she was um, suffering with. Um, so she suffers no more. So thanks for keeping the family um, in your prayers um, as we have services this week. Thank you. I was really blessed to see uh, the performance today, that was great. Uh, I've been blessed many times. Emily Seymour and I and Gary McMenn have played on this stage for many years, and it does my heart good to see something really good. Thank you. I think we have a praise and a couple of prayer requests. I think our first praise is for our United States Supreme Court and the overriding of the abortion that they did this week. Uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but New York State has the most liberal abortion laws, not just in our country, but in the world. So I think as New York State citizens, we have to work to overturn that. Uh, prayer requests are my little baby sister, Bonnie, will be undergoing a cancer procedure on Wednesday to remove a small tumor. Uh, they caught it early, and the prognosis is good, but whenever there's cancer involved, there's concern. And then the following Wednesday, I'll be going in for some minor surgery at Lourdes. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to share that today is my dad's birthday. <laughs> I have a prayer and a praise. Um, my prayer is that you would pray for a family concern going on right now we hope will be resolved by Friday but just pray for Matt and his family uh, please and my praise is that as I was 
reading this morning, I was struck again that I am made righteous by Jesus' righteousness. And it brought to mind an anthem uh, my husband led in the First Baptist Church, where one of the phrases was, the only view God has of me is through the blood of Jesus. Amen. I went down Friday to get Terry Lynn from Lackwood, and we went and saw Linda Gear or something like that for a while, and she is over at the camp or something or a house in Sandy Pond with family right now. She will be until about the end of this week, I guess. So we took a few minutes to say hello or something. Um, good morning. Um, just wanted to share with everyone, we had a blessing Friday afternoon, and our oldest grandson was married to his bride, and anyway, they're very happy. Thank you. Praise God. You know, my daughter Sharon just she came from Florida yesterday. Um, and last year, she did very good in the class. Even all subjects A, so she's doing very good. Um, thank you for this special. I thank for all the prayer group. They do prayer here. We experience the blessings, and uh, thank you for everything. And uh, Sharon had planned to come last uh, uh, Father's Day, but she, she said, "No, I'm coming to you know a birthday party." So just she came here. Thank you for. Good morning. I'd like to uh, say how great prayer is. This week we uh, saw two boys that came to this church, and now they're clean. In years before, I mean, they were in bad shape, and whatever you want to say they were on, but now one's preaching, and the other one's been clean for two years. Praise the Lord. Good morning. So I just uh, wanted to introduce quickly our new website. Um, that's a real praise. Uh, a huge thanks to Carrie Hedinger, who's managed our website for many years. Um, but things move quick these days, and a refresh was due. So we did a refresh on the site. And if you haven't been out to check it out, I encourage you to do so. Um, hopefully it's easily navigable to you. Um, one of the things I did want to point out is you can see the black button there towards the bottom of the screen says, listen here. And if we click there, um, a little box comes up and you have an option to listen either on Facebook or YouTube for our services. Um, our services are loaded at both locations. If you click the YouTube link, go ahead. You have another screen, and this is YouTube, and it takes you to all the available services that we have. Um, I should put in a, a ma minor plug. Um, you'll note there, too, that we actually have streamed a few funeral services. And it's not something necessarily people think about, but it's been a real blessing um, because we were able to stream live uh, funeral services and relatives and people that weren't able to travel or get there for whatever reason were able to enjoy that service uh, live. It's not something that uh, a lot of churches offer or funeral homes, so it's a real blessing that our church is able to do so, and I know the families have found it a real blessing. But um, all of our services are there as well, so if you're not able to, you're traveling or something on a Sunday morning, uh, check it out later, and that's an easy way to get there. Below the uh, home, the primary home page for the Union Center, uh, we have several different sections. Our worship, uh, learn and serve, go ahead, Mike, and our activities give and contact. 
So lots of easy, helpful information to find. We will be updating pictures on the website. Here's one of our fun pictures that we used recently, uh, for, and it's for our, our food pantry. So I'd encourage you all, if you're at a church activity, uh, i.e. the picnic later today that unfortunately I'm going to miss because I'm at a graduation party. But um, it would be a really great opportunity this afternoon to take some little mini group shots of people having fun at that wonderful picnic. Um, and if you send me those pictures, I will uh, uh, find some to use on the website. So please be thinking about that, and uh, we will we'll be able to post those and use them on our website just to make it more fun um, and interactive. So again, my thanks to everybody that helped with this project. We really appreciated all the input. Please, if you find that you would like something changed or updated or an idea for something else for content, feel free to contact the church office or Debbie, Debbie or myself. So thanks all. Take care. Okay. So as she talked about, there is a picnic, so I'm going to plug the picnic. We're all going. As you can see, I'm dressed in my shorts. I'm all ready to go. And I think there was something about a Hawaiian shirt. I think Rodney's got a Hawaiian shirt on. I see lots of flowers out there. This is as close as I got. But yeah, so please, after church, we are going to be enjoying a picnic together as a church family. So I would encourage you to go. Um, I am going to um, begin praying. Let's see. I'm Actually, no, I'm going to start with a silent prayer. I'm just going to give you all a couple minutes to gather yourself together, to just put some stuff before the Lord that we can't say out loud, and to get in an attitude of prayer. And then I am going to Pray, and then after that, um, we could all do the Lord's Prayer and end together. So if you join me in silent prayer. Okay. Just a moment. It is announced, uh, please, you know, I would like to invite some of the guys, uh, please stand if you was able. Uh, Cassidy, and Yejun, oh. and Andrew. Oh, it's yes. what happening to them. They're going to go to the next step, middle school and high school, and elementary to middle school. So we would like to bless and celebrate. <laughs> Do you have to say something? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. We would thank like you. to bless and celebrate their next step in the name of Jesus Christ because they are our hope and future in our church, right? Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Pastor Jay. <laughs> okay, if you join me in silent prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you for this beautiful summer day. I praise you and thank you that we've had such a, a long winter and it just kept going and going. But praise Jesus, we have summer here. I thank you for the sunshine. I thank you for the heat. I thank you for the warmth that we can feel on our skin. Lord Jesus, we just want to praise you and thank you for the beautiful music we had today from Neon, Juan, and Grace. How amazing it is, Lord Jesus, that you give us you give us each different talents so that we can praise you with them, Lord Jesus. And I just thank you for that today, that beautiful music that we had. I also want to thank you for birthdays. Thank you for Prashant's birthday. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give us another year on this earth and how special it is to celebrate each and every year that we have with our families. Lord, and I just thank you that Sharon is back and in the fold and doing well in medical school, but hear Lord Jesus today with us in church. I just pray that you would send a blessing with her as she continues to study, and Lord Jesus, um, to be a healer. Just pray for a blessing on her and that you would anoint her, Lord Jesus, to be a healer, but also a light for Christ in a world that is just broken. 
I thank you, Jesus, that you've sent her into this field. Lord God, I just want to pray for um, all the prayer requests that were given to us today, Lord Jesus. I pray for um, Dodie, uh, Dodie's family, Lord Jesus, as she's passed away. I just thank you that she's in the arms of the Lord and she's no longer suffering. Lord Jesus, I pray for Matt and his family, and I just I lift them up to you, Lord Jesus. And I don't know the particulars, but I don't need to because you do, and you have it all in hand. Lord God, I just thank you for um, thank you for Linda Gear. I thank you for her life and the witness and, and what she was to me and how she taught me so much about the Lord and about life. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would, you know, be with her. Father God, we lift her up to you as an elder of the church, as someone who is just amazing. Father, and I pray that you would bless her and keep her this week as she spends time with her family. I also pray for Dave's sister, Bonnie, that you would just uh, be with her um, as she's coming to medical procedures, but also with Dave as he's having a medical procedure this um, coming week at Lourdes. Lord God, we just lift up our family to you. Um, we just lift up all of us that are hurting, all of us that are sick. And Lord Jesus, there's so many of us that are hurting and sick, and we don't talk about it. There's a lot of us that have family members that are in jail or on drugs or homeless. They don't have people that care about them. They're not taking their medicines. Lord God, these are real things, and they affect us and hurt us. Father, I just pray that you would bring comfort to us, Lord Jesus. Bring comfort as we have family members that are suffering, and as in our own hearts we're suffering. Come to us and show us, Lord Jesus. Show us who you are. Comfort us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just come upon us now. I pray that you would open our ears to hear what you want us to hear. I pray that you would open our eyes to things that we just can't see. And I just pray for a blessing on uh, Pastor Jay as he gives the message, that he would speak your word, you would speak through him, and that we would listen. I pray all these things in your holy name. You join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Would you please stand and join me for our hymn of preparation? Number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Today's and our scripture today comes from Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7 through 9. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I might have a tumor and disown you and said, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and still and this owner the name of my God. Amen. As may, let us pray. As may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be worthy in front of you, Lord. May you receive all glory and honor. Amen. By any chance, can any of you think of a scene from a movie that made the biggest and long-lasting impression on you? Let's watch this clip of an opening from a movie. This is... <laughs> Yeah, motionless movie. It's just like modern times. Did you have a breakfast? <laughs> Reflected as the Tiffany opening scene. In an oversized sunglasses, a simple white polo necklace, a black little in a dress, an off-do hairstyle, this scene left a huge impression in the world of fashion and cinema. Due to that classic ensemble that is we know as a happen style, Personally, I haven't watched this movie ever from the beginning to the end, unfortunately. But this scene is still memorable for me. And so maybe this legendary movie scene will be remembered by people until the end of time. Do you all know this scene too? Regardless of age and generational differences, the majority of people think of this scene when asked people simple fashion. Because of this famous outfit, the combination of a black dress with a simple but stylish white accessories. We are currently in the middle of looking deeper into the meaning of simplicity, but today 
We would like to seek out ways that we can apply simplicity to our lives. The biggest advantage of simple life is the fact that your life goal, this will become clear. To put it in other terms, our choices and self-restraint train will help us to focus on the more precious an essential thing in our lives as children of God. In order to achieve this lifestyle, we must approach life with a minimalist style. Our simple minimal life will allow us to feel freer and clear-headed when it comes to our faith and lives that we live in this world that cares so much about positions. If you stop and think about this, Jesus Christ lived the minimalist lifestyle because his goal was the love of people and salvation. The following verse of Scripture shows how Jesus and his disciples described their own lifestyle. Jesus replied, The foxes have a dance, and brothers have nests." But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. He lived the life that he was willing to steer away on the cross for the love and the full salvation. He gave up his hometown, family, sacrificed his own life. But through that sacrifice of his minimal life, Jesus Christ gave spiritual abundance and salvation to everyone. It's just like this. When a professional sportsman has a crucial match coming up, they will remove all unnecessary things from their lifestyle and focus just on what they need to do their best. When athletes are preparing for important matches, they strictly manage what they eat, what they talk to, and what cut out personal time for leisure and pleasure so that they can spend every single day on their training, right? This is a story I will and I still remember that from many seniors and the superintendents who are also pastor, as a Methodist pastor, and it taught me over and over and over again. There are three things as a Methodist pastor you need to prepare anytime. First of all, it is a prayer or preaching anytime given, right? It may not surprise for you and me. The second one, is a prepare to move any time given. I've been married for 23 years, and my wife and I have been moving 10 times in out of 23 years. I know she and my children are great heroes, and not me. And third thing that many senior Methodist pastors and superintendents are taught me and taught to do is to prepare to die for the gospel any time given. <laughs> I'm getting used to preaching and moving a bit after 10 times. Of course, we don't like it. But still dying for the church and gospel has been something that uh, and became a challenge for me. That doesn't sink in my heart easily, but because I remember I live the hills with this identity of pastor and wayfarers on this planet. I should be ready to die anything, any time given. I know so you are all looking at me as I am a crazy person, right? <laughs> you might be saying, oh, that's a Korean Methodist church, not us. But let me remind you one thing. Where did the old Korean Methodists learn from? This is from United Methodist Church. And when you simplify your lifestyle like this, 
your life will go become even much clearer. Christ, in who practices this kind of lifestyle, can be called Christian minimalists. The foundation of this minimal lifestyle is the idea that by focusing on this thing, they are truly precious and essential to your life and spirituality, you will be able to connect with your true nature and you will be enlightened to a new found happinesses. Now then, what possibly interrupt our request for a minimal life? The countless amount of greed, abundance, and clinging onto material things. There is a point where the things that you want overcome the things you need. When the line gets crossed, those wants and needs turn into something distraught, distraught. That's why rather there is many times when our overabundance makes us our lives more complicated and difficult. Take a look at the disaster that struck Egypt. Particularly the second of ten pluggers that God sent to Egypt. To be honest, it's a bit of an exaggeration to call an infestation of frogs and flies a disaster since they are more annoying and uncomfortable than destructive. Especially frogs. And since the frog character in other stories are friendly, even cute in the characters, I remember when I was little, I would go outside to catch them and play with them, right? It seems that the plugs of a frog was not so life-threatening and not so great a suffering to them. Because when Moses asked the Pharaoh when I should pray for God, to stop this disaster, his answer was one more night with that horrible, disgusting creature frog. I can understand. This is what it says. The Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to take these frogs away from me, my people. And I will let your people go to offer sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officers and your people that you and your house may be rid of the frogs, except for those that remind in Nile. Verse 10. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. If the disaster had been intolerable or too much painful, his answer would suddenly have been right now. But instead of answering like this, his answer was tomorrow. So maybe that's why I doubt that the frog sent to Egypt could be called a disaster. However, God's reasoning and his message is clear through this disaster. The fact that the river infested with anything at all was a bad omen for more plagues to come. In other words, anything more than necessary in our life is a disaster. Therefore, remember no matter how great, too much, or excessive, or normal amount of necessary can come to us as a disaster. This is telling us about that. The Nile will team with the frogs that will come up into your palace and your bedroom, onto your bed, into the house of your officers and all your people and into your oven and kneading thrones, the frogs will come upon you and your people and your officers. An abundance of good health and prosperity, over-consumption, diligence, appetite, conversation, 
And so on are things that can cause envy, misunderstanding, war, conflict, and in some cases, even death. The essence and drive of our lives will be lost because of an excessive amount of those extreme things. An excessive appetite will dull the true flavor of your food. Excessive conversation will lack sincerity, and even an excessive amount of friendliness will cause the craft flattery and bad trillery. Therefore, overabundance causes people and things to lose their essence and purpose. As children of God, we must aim and purpose to live minimally to prevent the loss of our identity and faith. We must cut ourselves loose from the things that are holding us back. Let's take a look at this section from today's select scripture. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Gave me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and still and so dishonor the name of our God. The writer of this passage hoped for their life to become simple and minimal so that they own this on God or this on the purpose of life, they live by their faith. The author was afraid that they would disown God if their never-ending greed were to cross the line between what they want and what they need. It's just like how the frogs infest the Nile River in Egypt. So they confessed the following, God Almighty, I pray for your help so that I will lose the essence and purpose to my life. A minimal life is a life lived the pursuit of essential things, and you can pursue a simpler life by arranging your list of priority based on the value of your fundamentals. When you own nothing, that also means that you have nothing to lose, and nothing to dispose about, and nothing to feel regret about. The Bible compares our lives to that of a wayfarers. A wayfarer is comparable because how little they carried with them. Look, this is a pilgrim ways from extend from France to Spain. It's about 800 kilometers away from Santiago in Spain. And some vigorous travelers were, were able to make that trip in 40 days. In order to cross that distance in that amount of time, they need to travel through 20 kilometers of rough mountain lows every single day. Apparently, the most difficult part of their trip was carrying the weight of their backpacks that held 40 days' worth of supplies. The life of wayfarers is a catalyst to minimal life. At first, your bags feel very light, but they get heavier as the time passes by until they're eventually crushed by the weight. You must dispose of the weights before we get to that point. You must travel through life lightly and simply because we are not here to stay on this earth forever. We are just passing through this world. The life of a Christian is a minimal one. All of my children who are struggling under the heavy weight of their baggages, head it over to me. I will relieve you. These words are said by God to all of his children who are struggling to bear the weight of this lavish world and it accomplishes, caused by living mixedly. 
these comforting words from God are here to believers of the weight of this world and escape from its complication so that our lives can become simpler and we can experience true peace and comfort in our life. Amen. So let us and go through the, our closing hymn today with our heart and mind. Please stand if you're able and then let's sing together. Go to the benediction. Let's make sure follow this worship service. We will have a fellowship in the park. I don't know which the name. But if we learn more about any address, you'll be able to find all new bulletin. So I would like to and look forward to see all of you in this park. Let's pray. Simple life. Make us to even much focus on the essence and the purpose in our life, which is placed our trust in God and is faithful to the end. 
May God help us to focus on the more precious and essential thing in our lives as children of God. May allow us to experience this abundance of life and simplicity. Go in God's peace and comfort. And God's people say, Amen.